This video is going to be a little bit different. I needed a new system for my dedicated home server. I decided to go the used route and I bought a Lenovo ThinkStation P500 for about $200. And for the price, the system is pretty good. It has an Intel Xeon processor, E5-1630 at 3.7 GHz. It has 32 GB of RAM and a 240 GB brand new SSD. It also has a Quadro K620 graphics card. And as you can see, the I.O. is awesome with many USB 3 ports. One of the coolest features of this ThinkStation is its industrial design. Everything is toolless so that it's easy to take out and service as you see in the video. What's not so cool is that this specific system has not been maintained well and it's full of dust. In addition, the SSD is just thrown in there and not inserted in the drive bay as it should be. The system has to be cleaned thoroughly. So I disassemble everything starting from the SSD, the power supply and the hard drive base. Next, I remove the rear exhaust fans and the GPU and eSATA port. I remove the two memory modules and the optical drive. The CPU cooler has an interesting form factor as the heat exchanger is offset from the center of the CPU socket. I take out the optical drive bay and the front I.O. cables so that they don't get in the way. I start by vacuuming the chassis and some of the components. I know that this might make some of you mad that I'm not using compressed air but a vacuum and increasing the risk for static electricity, but I'm ready to take that risk for the convenience of using a vacuum cleaner. I cleaned the CPU socket from the old thermal paste with an alcohol solution. I initially didn't want to open the socket, but eventually I opened it so that I can clean the old thermal paste thoroughly. At this stage I wipe out the dust from the case. The honeycomb pattern at the front is very cool in terms of weight to strength ratio and I like the look of it, but it's terrible to clean. I cleaned all of the individual components before starting the reassembly process. These hard drive bays are pretty cool. They hold 2.5 and 3.5 inch drives and the drive insertion is toolless, as well as the insertion of the drive bay into the case. The SSD is new, it was a gift from the reseller from which I bought the workstation. I cleaned the GPU as much as possible from the outside before I disassemble the cooler so that I can clean it thoroughly and change the thermal paste. This GPU is very easy to disassemble. The cooler is held by four screws on the bottom. I'm glad I disassembled it because there was a significant amount of dust in the cooler and beneath it and the thermal solution had hardened significantly. To be fair, I do not expect to have thermal problems with the GPU at all because as a home server it will rarely be utilized, if at all. I put the card back together and I apply a thermal solution. This card does not have any thermal pads. With the GPU reassembled, I lightly cleaned the memory and the optical drive, as they were relatively clean. The exhaust fans, on the other hand, needed quite a bit of work.
I disassembled the CPU core so that I can clean the fan and the heat exchanger separately. As you can see they both need a thorough cleaning. After the fan is clean, I reassemble it back together and I move on to the CPU heat exchanger, which had plenty of hardened thermal solution. Now that both the fan and the heat exchanger are cleaned, I reassemble the CPU cooler back together. All of the individual components are cleaned and I can start the reassembly process starting with the memory. Conveniently, Renovo provided instructions on the case lid on how to install the memory sticks so that I can benefit from dual channel memory support. Next I install my CPU cooler with fresh thermal paste and I continue with the GPU and the external SATA card. I reinstall the two rear exhaust fans and continue with the drive base. My SSD will be in one of the drive bays and I bought a new Seagate Barracuda 4TB drive for the other bay, which will store my media files. These drive bays are great because they are toolless, but what I don't like about them is that they have no cable management solution, so the cables are essentially staying out of the base and there's no other way to route them as far as I can see. I reinstalled the optical drive bay, the optical drive and the front I.O. cables so that all cables are routed and I can start cable management. I also reinstalled the power supply. The power supply is 80 plus gold 480 watts and it's cableless. Next I spent ages trying to cable manage the SATA cables and I made a mistake, so I needed to rearrange the drive so that the lid can close. Overall, I'm satisfied with how this turned out, it's cleaned and serviced sufficiently and it should do its job well as a home server. This thing station turned out pretty easy to disassemble and reassemble back together. I'm impressed with the industrial design and how toolless this workstation is. I'll make a second video for the software setup of my home server, where I'll set up the Linux OS, Docker containers, and I'll set up some common servers like Samba for file sharing, Flex Media Server and others. Stay tuned.